All right, guys, welcome back to another um, Japan video, uh, Japan tri tri trip video. This one is, um, sorry, I stepped away from the camera for a bit right there. Uh, so this one is about the shit that I brought that actually got used. Um, so if you were planning a trip to Japan, you your TikTok and YouTube is most likely filled to the brim with travel tips and stuff like that. And for some reason, <clears throat> American travelers are obsessed with uh, a couple things. Uh, mainly that you can't go anywhere if you have tattoos, which is not true. There are certain places that you can't go, but there's also exemptions. Uh, especially if you, <laughs> you do not look uh, Japanese and you have tattoos, it won't really be an issue. You might get a couple death stares from certain older ladies, but that's about it. Um, and then also this obsession with pocket Wi-Fi. I'm going to start off with saying, fuck the pocket Wi-Fi. Get an eSIM. It's 2023. You do not need another device that you need to keep charged and keep track of and <laughs> need to stand in line for to get it and then hand it back. It's just not worth the hassle. It's the same with um, a physical SIM card. Um, it's definitely better, in my opinion, to get the SIM card than the pocket Wi-Fi. But then again, you can even survive without them because there's free Wi-Fi pretty much everywhere in Tokyo, at least. So, And that's where most folk will be heading for their first trip, at least, uh, I assume. So get an eSIM. Most phones these days are compat compatible with eSIMs. Um, American phones are a bit weird, so you have to look into your, your phone plan, or, um, I mean, even then, I think most of them have the capacity to do an eSIM, even if they do not have the, the SIM card slot, just because, by definition, that phone's almost already, like, working on an eSIM, because, uh, unless it's, like, hard-coded, uh, with, a uh, like, the hardware is inside with a SIM card, which I doubt that's how they do it, but I could be wrong. Could be talking up my ass. But yeah, my recommendation is getting an unlimited data eSIM. Uh, one thing to note, though, is depending on the provider, you will be um, vpn to Hong Kong, so your TikTok might mess up, but when you go back and you turn off the eSIM, everything goes back to normal, so no, no problem there. You're not going to lose your your TikTok uh, forever just uh, on your trip and there are other revenues of having like uh, short form content like Instagram, YouTube shorts, so on. Uh, you, you're not going to die for, from not having TikTok for however long you're in Japan. And even if you are so addicted to TikTok that you can't live without it, then it is possible to just turn off the eSIM um, and then use your regular SIM and then go on the hotel Wi-Fi or the cafe Wi-Fi, or the phone booth Wi-Fi, so, and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, that was the, that was the first thing. Um, but yeah, let's just get into stuff that I actually used every single day for the 10 days I was in Tokyo. So, one thing that not a lot of people seem to mention is the fact that you will need to have your passport on you. This might come as a, a given for a lot of people, but for certain folks that maybe haven't had a passport before this, it will not make any sense. And your uh, local, li uh, your driver's license uh, or your um, your ID, your school ID, and so on, will not be efficient. You'll need to have your passport on you. I am pretty sure it's a um, like it's by law you need it on you. And it's also just a super easy way to have a um, photo uh, photo ID. It's it's a bit cumbersome because they're quite big, but you can get like nice cases and so on to have them in there. Mine's quite beat up and have like um, baggage uh, receipts on the on the back because I like my passport to you know, get some character and you know it's still also you should also just be bringing it with you in any case if you want to do the, the hassle of doing tax free, which I didn't bother, but you know you save ten percent, uh, but you got to stay in line to get that money back and so on. Oh, gosh, it's just. Too convoluted and not worth it in my opinion, but I'm also uh, in a position of privilege, which I do acknowledge, so that's why I I can say I just didn't want to bother, but for people where that 10% would make a difference, definitely make sure you, that you, you bring your passport and you go to tax-free shops and so on. 
Uh, next up is, um, you know, the most basic thing is bags. So this is the bag I traveled with on the airplane. It it had all my my uh, tech stuff and uh, certain items that I didn't want to uh, check in or put in my uh, my carry on, but kept it in here. This is the art sack by. Um, Maybe the brand is also just Artsac, I'm not sure. But it's a, a small-ish uh, backpack with a, a laptop sleeve inside and three uh, like front pockets with uh, webbing, uh, molly webbing. I didn't bring this anywhere uh, other than on the plane. This stayed in the hotel and kept souvenirs safe and tech safe. Uh, I put tech away in this and hung it up uh, when... Um, the the hotel I, I was at they they um, had a mandatory cleaning every three days that you couldn't opt out of so I put my stuff in here so that the the cleaners could do their job and they wouldn't have to touch my stuff um, other than maybe move the bag or but they didn't even do that they just uh, kept it le left it where I I hung it on a rack so uh, a backpack is a good thing but it's a bit of a cumbersome. Um, item to bring around so what I did was I brought an empty uh, sling bag so I bought this uh, sling bag from I think weekday uh, it's a European brand but yeah this uh, this was more than enough you could keep some stuff in here if you went shopping you could bring bags along with you you had two uh, mesh pockets for drinks which is very important because you will be buying drinks in the vending machines Constantly and you'll always have one or two drinks on you Especially if you go in the warmer months, you, you'll need water. You'll need Bukhari sweat. You need something to keep you going um, The front pockets kept battery packs and chargers and also a another item that I'll bring up in a bit um, But then this is too big to just go out Go grab a snack at the Konbini. So that's where you bring the small personal uh, bag this is also what I keep my passport, my money, my phone, uh, uh, my e my earpods. They go in here uh, when I go travel. Uh, air <clears throat> Airlines don't count this as a bag if you if you wear it onto the airplane because it's so small. So you just keep that on you and you don't really uh, make a fuss about it. And then you just keep very important essential things on here it's very difficult to steal from because it's on your body it's very close you can keep your hand on it you can keep it in front of you so this is um, definitely a more secure option then when i went out i just brought this along in here as like a safety shell around my money around my passport my phone all went in here inside the bag so there were two zippers so they'd have to rip this off me to get to this so you know just Safety first and so on. If you're going to Japan, won't be really, won't really be an issue. But this is just a good tip in overall for traveling. So, next up, with um, it's an item that I that kept in this bag at all times. Uh, was I was told we were going on a guided tour of the uh, Tsukiji food, uh, fish market, and I was told we had to wear a mask, which wasn't the case. Just they haven't updated their COVID like. <laughs> the websites and so on, they keep saying that you need to wear a mask. Uh, nobody wore a mask, not even the guide uh, uh, at this tour. Uh, there's a lot of people still wear masks on the, the metro and around town and so on. If you feel more comfortable wearing a mask, no one is going to look um, weirdly on you. you you're going to fit right in. But I kept two, um, I kept a mask for me and my brother um, on here uh, in this at all times. Just in case that we got on a too crowded train or it was a requirement to go somewhere, we had them on us. Uh, I even had some uh, spare um, disposable mask in my backpack just in case. And you know, when you travel, there's a high likelihood of getting uh, some kind of sickness, especially if you're on a long flight uh, and you're just sitting in this incubation chamber <laughs> with hundreds of people. And you know there's always that one fucker that goes on there when he is completely sick and should have stayed home. So just, you know, if you still want to do stuff, you can wear a mask and, and not feel like you're spreading your germs too much. I also kept two completely fresh sets of compression arm, uh, like arm warmer thingies, uh, you know, sports sleeves. 
just in case you went into somewhere where they were very much against you having tattoos, you could go out, put these on, uh, you know, stay away for a little bit, come back, you know, put a hat on, <laughs> you know, do your whole disguise thing, wear these, or if you see a sign that says no tattoos or something like that, put these on, go in, do your thing. It's a bit more difficult if you have leg tattoos like I I have. I have two uh, big, um, I have a, uh, a panther and a tiger on my legs. Nobody really looks at your legs though, so if you wear high socks, it's not going to be a big deal. And you can also just, you know, wear light pants, so it won't be too hot, even though it, it'll be like 20 degrees outside. 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, but yeah, I, I bought these just in case, just because you saw so many TikToks saying to cover up your tattoos and blah blah blah. Not necessary. I even had a very sweet lady compliment my tattoos in this like tiny um tiny toy shop and, and she was like they look very nice and I and it was a very pleasant uh interaction. Um most people will, will simply just ignore the fact that you have tattoos, especially if you look foreign. So yeah, that's just uh, how it is. Um next up for money, I, I had my um do I have it here? I do not. So I had a, a Bellroy card sleeve for my credit card and my driver's license and my um, my uh, like my my travel um, insurance and so on. Kept that in there. All my cards in there. Also, I emptied one of the outer sleeves so I could put my um, my the card the key card for the hotel in there. So I'm just put that against something. I don't have to fiddle with that. But then you will also need a coin purse and I like to keep my cash separate so I don't like stuff my wallet with cash especially in Japan where you'll be having so many bills and so many coins and this all just went into the small little um, sling bag that I had and you know like this is all I have left so I, I used a money clip but this is you know just uh, like an hour's worth of spending money uh, that I had left before we enter the plane, and then you, you know, coins. You'll have so many coins. Um, you'll mainly be having oh, 100 yen coins, 10 yen coins, not so many 50 yen coins, but they're still a thing. But and then this useless piece of, of garbage, the one yen coin, absolutely ridiculous. Like, I don't get why they do it other than wanting to have exact um, cash back, but. Like, no, nobody accepts it other than, like, shops where you have to painstakingly put out, blah, blah, blah. But nobody does that. Only the shops do that when they give you your money back. Um, completely useless coin. I actually threw mine out because who wants 13 yen um, in, in 1 yen coins? Can't even put them in the vending machines. So, you, they're, they're very useless. <laughs> um, next up, personal hygiene stuff. I brought uh, some hand sanitizer. There's hand sanitizer everywhere. I just liked having this for the airplane and then also bring deodorant from home you can probably find it but you will not find what you are used to using most likely because they do not sweat the same way that we do it's just genetics so I, I, I really love the Gillette uh, antiperspirant uh, gel this uh, works the best for me might not work the best for you it doesn't leave any stains or anything and it dries really quick and it it's and it works all day in my opinion so uh, just a recommendation this is what I went with I brought two bottles only used half of it because it was you know not too hot so it lasts a while um, but yeah um, also bring power bricks uh, one like this is fine when it has all of them this is like a travel thing they're kind of shit my brother borrowed this because he didn't have um, he didn't have one of his own, where I have a dedicated one for American and Japan travel, which is this uh, Minix one. This is super nice. It also has an attachment that goes on here, so you can use it um, on European plugs. But this is just a little one that has two USB-C, if it will focus, uh, two USB-C and a normal USB, USB-A. Um, super powerful, very small form factor really enjoyed this i i use that every day where one of these is is handy if you go a lot of places but it only has uh, the one input so 
uh, if you only have um, like an Apple product, that would be fine. But if you have a bunch of different stuff you want to charge, I'd recommend one of the, something like this. Um, particularly the Mini X here that I've been thoroughly enjoying using. Um, next up, you'll be buying a lot of uh, a lot of uh, drinks and so on. And if you don't want to be wasteful and be more mindful of the environment, I recommend being a water bottle. I forgot this, so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, too bad, but a lot of the hotels have filtered water, so um, you'll be good drinking from a tap if you don't feel like uh, spending 100 to 150 yen on water, but when you're out and about, you'll run out of water on your water bottle regardless, and you'll be picking up drinks anyways. Uh, just be uh, you know mindful of your consumption of, of, of plastic, which is very difficult when you're in Japan, because everything is individually wrapped, uh, there's plastic in pretty much everything um, so yeah if you are if you want to be very mindful of your environmental uh, footprint then just you, you might have to <laughs> not be so critical of yourself while you're in Japan because it's very difficult to 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 manage to not have a large <laughs> plastic footprint when you're there uh, also something that I recommend bringing is a notebook so you could bring something like actually you could also buy a notebook I bought this setup uh, at Tokyo Station it's a tra travelers company uh, like a compete setup with the little insert and the the wallet insert and a pen and everything it's actually pretty affordable for quality goods but you could also bring something like the September leather uh, Traveler's uh, notebook. This is like a cheap version of this one in large, but it's very very high quality as well It's actually I prefer it because it comes with a lot more The Traveler's company ones come with one band that you need to jerry rig every um, Insert on where here this comes with like five bands or four bands So I can fit in the plastic sleeve two complete inserts and a cardboard sleeve uh, and it has this uh, this leather part right here, so you can keep your pen tucked in if you don't want to go ahead and buy a pen clip, like I have for my small uh, passport-sized uh, Traveler's Company one. But you can also just go ahead with a tra uh, with a classic moleskin notebook. This is what I brought along with me. This is my reading log. So whenever I read novels, I like to, when I'm done uh, reading, I like to jot down the the chapters and the date and what I thought of what I read so far. It's a pretty new project, but you know, I have a few pages of uh, of entries and I really enjoy bringing this along. I brought this along. I didn't read, write down too much, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, you, you've got to keep stuff like that around just to keep your yourself sane. Um, so along the, uh, the lines of of this is I, I count these as entertainment items, but also just you know documenting and stuff. But you really need stuff to do while you're at the hotel. And some people find the a phone to be completely uh, adequate as entertainment. However, I do recommend bringing stuff like an iPad. This was my most used uh, item of entertainment, along with my um, with my Switch Lite. So I bought a Switch Lite. Uh, just for traveling um, which sounds insane when I say it out loud but that's just the fact of it this is my travel switch the switch light is a perfect little de device to use when you're traveling because the form factor is not as big as the regular switch uh, there we are guys um, and but it's still pretty much as powerful the battery life is a bit better in my opinion because it doesn't have the joy cons to charge uh, constantly and also just the switch feels so fragile with these detachable Joy-Cons. It's a great console at home when you have it docked or, or if you play at home, it's not an issue. But traveling, the Switch Lite is supreme. And it's smaller. You could bring like a Steam Deck or one of the other, um, I think, who did another one? Asus? Did they do one? I don't know. You can bring those, but I just recommend a Switch because it works offline as well. I am... And the, the iPad, those are were the three items I used the most. I also brought my Kindle. I read on the play, airplane. I read a little bit in in the in the hotel, but mainly I played the Switch and I watched YouTube on my on my iPad. Also, 
the iPad is just better for movies because they're higher quality than the airplane ones. I don't know what it is about airplane movies. The quality is like 2080p and the sound is like ripped off a Chinese bootleg. So it's even worse than a Chinese bootleg. It was ridiculous, like a completely horrid um, experience to, to watch the uh, airplane movies. So download stuff on your iPad, use your high quality earbuds and just enjoy yourself. So much better than anything the airplane can do. Um, I brought this, didn't use it. I have Pokemon ROMs on here. It was nice to have in a pinch. I had this in my little sling bag just in case I, I wanted to do something while waiting in line or you know waiting for the airplane to to um, to take off or like when we actually had to uh, had to wait a bit in the airplane because uh, a bird got hit by another plane so we had to wait for them to clear the, the airfield so this comes in handy in a pinch not the most powerful thing it's a um, Mio Mini Plus I think um, but great little console super fun and the battery lasts a while it's USB-C, so you can... This is USB-C, this is USB-C, this is USB-C, this is not. this, But it's the same as my phone, so it's not too big a deal. But as you can see, I try to keep all my, my things either... Um, the the Apple port thingy, is it Flash? I can't remember. Or USB-C. If it's not USB-C, I, I brought a spare micro USB cable, but it's like a small one. So it was only in the pinch if I needed it. But speaking of of, um, of tech, I just threw stuff everywhere. Um, give me a moment, guys. Right, so I bought two pouches, um, which is nice to keep your stuff organized. So I had one for wires and one for tech. The tech one is a bit of a catch-all, so I had like an an ESR um, wireless MagSafe charger stand. Didn't use this, but it was nice to know that I had it in case I, I wanted to use my phone. I had the converter for my Apple Pencil. I had the converter for my uh, Mini X uh, charging brick. And, you know, just some uh, US, uh, flash to USB-C and uh, uh, USB-C to micro. Um, you know, just small stuff like that, and you might need a pinch that doesn't take up too much room. But in here, I kept my wires, you know, so I bought like nice uh, corded wires for my brick. And there's like spare charging cables in here, stuff like that. You know, just to, to make sure you have everything in one place and you know where to go look if you need it. So super nice to keep things organized in these like... These were like 20 cents or something in total because I bought like a bundle of them. They're poor quality, but they do the job fine. You can buy nicer ones, but it's not the end of the world if you don't. Uh, next up, let's talk about some more entertainment. So, well, I, I say entertainment, but it's also like a, a peace of mind thingy. So headphones. I, all right, I just looked through my SD card and saw that the footage wasn't lost. So this is a couple days later from the previous footage, which might explain why the, the lighting is a bit different or uh, also why there's such a, a shift in tone. But I think I was about to talk about uh, headphones. So I bring, I brought two, uh, I bought earbuds and nice headphones from, from Bose. Like these are expensive, these are expensive too. These are Gen 1 Apple uh, Earpods Pro. Earpods, Earpods, whatever. I don't know what I mean. But I like bringing two options just because you don't want to be in the airplane without them. Um, but I also bought a third option over there. So you can go ahead and bring maybe one and then buy. Like um, Anchor products are super cheap in Japan. Uh, so I went ahead and bought these. Um, and honestly, from now on, I'll be going nowhere without two different sets of um, earbuds. But when I'm going traveling, I'm also bringing the over-ear um, Bose ones, just because they're super nice and comfortable. Um, and you don't want to be stuck on an airplane without the the option of having noise cancelling, just because it's, it's so much ambient noise and people 
stuck in a incubation ch base, <laughs> a flying incubation chamber. So, if you're gonna get sick anyways, you might as well be comfortable <laughs> while doing it. Um, and then I think some of the, the last things I I had left was battery packs. So I didn't want to get caught out in Tokyo without having a way of charging. So I brought this with me everywhere. I didn't use it because uh, phones nowadays have decent batteries, but this is a um, 20 milliamp hour um, power bank. So it, it, it'll charge your phone at least uh, a couple times. Um, there are also other alternatives. I, I brought along with me a, uh, a MagSafe battery. This is pretty shit. It's... Um, I don't even remember how much. It's not even a full charge, but it was just as a like backup plan in case this was uh, somehow broken and I really needed a charge, you know, to find my way back to the hotel. Or uh, I didn't have a physical uh, Suica, so it'd be impossible to get anywhere without my phone. So this was very important. Um, an alternative to buying the expensive, uh, bad uh, Apple one. Uh, you can get the anchor one, which is uh, I picked it up over there. So I bought these two um, things. So this is a, um, I think this is it five thousand milliamp hours. It's not. It, it's I think it's about the same charge as this, but this specific model has a very cool feature that makes it very useful, and it's the stand. So you can use it to as a tripod and so on. Speaking of tripods, I recommend if you do any type of content. Uh, bring a tripod, something like this, or buy one at Don Quixote. They sell these for very cheap. Along with that's where also where I bought these uh, this battery pack and also the Soundcore Liberty 4 HC, something like that. Um, something that I brought with me because I can't stand the heat and it was very warm. And um, for somebody who is from a uh, Nordic country, I brought a um, little hand fan. So it's just from Amazon, and it's like a little hand fan. You charge it with uh, USB-C, and um, this also actually uh, is a 2,000 milliamp hour power bank. So multi-purpose, um, and it was also just a backup for the backup for the backup. And I don't know why, but they also have a uh, flashlight in this. So multi-purpose item definitely was just in case I got too hot or I was in a pinch with power. Um, bring this and two of the others and you'll be set for the entire day uh, if you remember to charge your phone uh, at night I think those were the, the last things on the list of stuff I, I brought and used I believe so I hope so if not ask me questions down below and I'll answer them uh, truthfully uh, yeah that's all for this time guys I was actually about to film my haul because I thought this footage was lost, but this video is coming out anyways, but the haul will be first. See you guys in the next one.